Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is my colleague, Forbes staff writer, Zach Everson. Zach, you have news about Mar-a-Lago during the time Donald Trump had access to classified documents. But first, before we get into that, the former president was in a federal courthouse in Miami on Tuesday. Can you tell us a little bit about that appearance? Sure. It was uh, his second arraignment in about uh, in about a month there. This time was for a federal arraignment. Uh, the allegations stem from him storing documents, classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. And during this time when he did have classified documents or had access to them, Mar-a-Lago was trying to employ foreign workers, according to your report. Can you expand on that for us? In 2021 to 2022, for that season, Mar-a-Lago looked to hire 87 foreign workers. And if you go back throughout the entire Trump presidency, through when the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, all told, they had three. They sought to hire 380 foreign workers. So, if a uh, and these are temporary workers. So, when a uh, company wants to go ahead and hire temporary foreign laborers, they have to send an app. They have to apply to the Department of Labor for it. They have to explain what the positions are. They have to stipulate that. They couldn't find any Americans who were willing and able to do that work. And then there's a list of about 87 countries that these laborers can come from. And this information is all public. So all it takes is go to the Department of Labor's website and search it for Mar-a-Lago. So these workers don't need a visa? The guidelines seem pretty loose from what you just said. It, it's, it's called the H-2B visa is the one that they need. And that's what they need to apply for um, through the Department of Labor. And it was interesting because that is a visa that uh, Donald Trump kind of had a carve out for during his presidency, famously uh, anti foreign nationals coming, taking American jobs. But he was quite OK with it um, happening for short term, temporary workers, the kind that he uses at Mar-a-Lago, at his golf course, a couple other properties as well. That's an interesting coincidence. Has he ever spoken to that? Has he ever publicly or in a statement to you or Forbes said, yes, Mar-a-Lago does rely on these types of foreign workers? They haven't said anything like that to me. I'm not sure if they've said anything like that to, to anybody else. He has. There's a there's a speech out there where in the middle of rallying up the crowd with the the, you know, America first rhetoric, he kind of backs off a little bit and says, like, you know, America first, American jobs except for those temporary part-time workers those are good we need to keep those coming and you know at that moment he kind of loses the crowd a little bit um but that's that's the only extent i can recall him talking about it i want to talk a little bit more about this because it really doesn't seem to be in line with the messaging that trump himself has said aside from that little carve out within the four years of his presidency so he hosted um, some Made in America events at the White House, and in July of 2019, he said this in a press release. We want to build, create, and grow more products in our country using American labor, American goods, and American grit. When we purchase products made in the U.S., the profits stay here, the revenue stays here, and the jobs, maybe most importantly of all, they stay right here in the USA. So can you speak a little bit more to that? What's this all about? Well, he seems to have uh, good experience with the program. The number of um, foreign workers that they've sought, and again, we don't know how many they've actually hired. We just know how many they've applied to the Department of Labor to hire. It's gone up every year since 2016 when it was 25, uh, excuse me, 65. And last year it was up to 91, increasing a little bit with the exception of 2020 when uh, during the COVID pandemic that, that the visa program was, was somewhat shuttered. And what are these types of jobs at Mar-a-Lago? Can you go through the qualifications, the pay, requirements, things like that? Sure. The pay is generally somewhere in the range of like 12 to $17 an hour. The jobs are for housekeepers, servers, and cooks. Housekeepers and servers, they're looking for just having three months of verifiable experience at a luxury resort. Uh, cooks a little bit more. They want six months and you need to, um, you know, make, be able to speak English, have a professional appearance, uh, but it didn't doesn't look all that strenuous. So these foreign nationals were employed at Mar-a-Lago while this classified information was stored there, correct? Yes, absolutely. And that, uh, you know, you would have to figure we don't know for sure who was allowed in what you know, what employees were allowed in what rooms, but you know, the, the documents were stored in a ballroom in a, a bathroom, in the president's office, in his bedroom. Uh, you've got to imagine that some Mar-a-Lago staff, notably housekeepers, would have access to those rooms at some point. 
And is there any indication as of now, as you and I sit here, that any staffer at Mar-a-Lago, whether a foreign worker or an American worker, had access to these documents, were privy to private, sensitive conversations, anything like that? Uh, the only definitive stuff that we really have is what's in the indictment, and the indictment makes no mention of it. But you know, when this uh, case does eventually get to trial and when more, more, more filings are made, I'm certainly uh, it's one of the things I'm going to be looking for to see if, if these foreign workers are mentioned. Because it really seems like a, if you're a foreign leader, it seems like you'd be derelict in your job not to try to get somebody in there. You know, these qualifications are are pretty weak. Um, you know, if, if I was if I was a, a citizen of another country and I found out that our intelligence agency wasn't trying to to get people into Mar-a-Lago, I'd be a little disappointed. It almost seems like it might be a scandal. And from the photos that were released of where the documents were, they seemed to be in places that were somewhat public. I mean, they weren't locked in a safe. As you said, they were in a ballroom, they were in a bathroom, they were in a shower. And they were they there like fully locked or were they moving around? What do we know about that? They certainly were moved around. I don't know if they were locked at any particular time. It doesn't seem to be the case when the FBI uh, raided the premises. But you know, it's, it's possible they could have been locked at some point, but they did definitely move around. That was something that was mentioned in the indictment. Zach, as this all unfolds, I know I always tell you this, but I know you will come back on and provide some more insight. Zach Everson, thanks for joining me. Anytime.